Hey, subscribe to the channel. You seen the thumbnail, you seen the title. That's right. The footage shows that the intruders were already inside the store. They were inside the store when they attacked young Dolph and they ran out of the back door just like everybody is telling. 007, the witness, the key eyewitness, was noted that she has seen the car that was black that belonged to Maurice pulling up to the cookie shop filled with people, at least four people. And that was before young Dolph had arrived. She was outside on the left side near the Family Dollar store on the in-between having a cigarette. Now, sources are saying that she is a credible witness and source and that the information about Maurice being already there is very true. The information about intruders and hitmen being inside of the cookie store is very true. Now, Young Dolph was set up inside that cookie shop by the people who are against him in that city. The hit came from higher up, executed through CMG, through the affiliates with these small guys. And it was said to be that there was some type of money involved and a payment done for the hit. And that one of the suspects that has been apprehended and is sitting in custody behind Shelby County bars has already confessed and had told on his co-defendants, stating that they were paid about 80000 for the hit of U.S. dollars. And that that money was paid by nobody other than Yogati himself and was uh, associated through Black Youngster and the CMG crew. Now, this indictment is going to come up for a RICO case involving Yo Gotti, Black Youngster, Moneybag Yo, OG Bang Wayne, and other affiliates that are at the current time uh, informants and cannot be stated their names at this moment. And these informants are the ones uh, like Shondell Barnett and Cornelia Smith um, and Justin Johnson. These informants are the ones that are going to be uh, the sources that told on Yo Gotti and the CMG crew and is unraveling the targeting Rico case for CMG, Yo Gotti, Moneybag Yo, Black Youngster, and OG Bang Wayne and other CMG affiliates. Now, it seems to be that Yo Gotti is very worried and has, has already contacted his boss, Jay-Z, who is summoning the Fed lawyer, uh, Perez. Ms. Perez is coming in to uh, bail out Yo Gotti from the situation. And this Rico case would be uh, swept under the rug with a simple uh, ratting out of a couple of the people and maybe a, a fall guy of either straight drop Justin Johnson, Black Youngster, or OG Bang Wayne. Now the hit has been done and the Makita's Cookie Shop was played a role in the entire thing. They uh, approved and uh, was the ones that was selected to have the hit done at their location. And they uh, said yes with flying colors and approved of the hit uh, to be at their location. Um, and they were told that they would be paid off to do so. Now, the payment for them um, has been split up amongst the people. And the Raven Lady is the one that um, is currently their spokesman. And the spokesman, uh, she's doing a terrible job. Uh, she's getting a lot of fire uh, lit up under them and is making it seem like they are even more guilty than they already are. Now, what you need to understand is that with all this information coming in, the super lawyer is trying to get straight drop out of uh, out on bond so that he does not get beat up and uh, and no any longer and have to you know have the have his soap be dropped and whatnot. So that's what's going on. And uh, Key Glock uh, has come out to a couple of the basketball games, but he has not um, spoken out publicly um, on the situation at hand. Now, in other news, it is uh, known that Yogati is in hideout right now. Makita's Raven is also in hideout right now, Black Youngster, because they know that this Rico case is coming at any given moment. It should be any day now where the feds swoop in with helicopters 
and rope down onto the uh, onto the rooftops and balconies of their residences and jump in through the windows and apprehend all of those suspects and wanted people and make sure that, that justice is done for young Dolph. Now, that's exactly what needs to happen as, as far as uh, seeing through that just, justice di does get done for Dolph, and that's what we all want to happen, and that's what we are advocating for, and we are going to continue to do so until all of these people that are guilty but not have been spoken with get spoken with, and we get all of the story straight on why they lied to us and make sure that there is repercussions for the actions and all already the lies that they have told to the, the general public, the people, and everybody concerned and watching eyes on this entire situation and case. Now, what is yet to be said is exactly what is going on with the footage. We need to get the footage. Uh, we need it now. We needed it yesterday. Uh, this footage that they have in these surveillance cameras, for some reason, they are trying to keep something from us and don't want us to see it yet. Uh, this might not, information might not be released for years, but when it is released, uh, it is going to be said that it will be sold for a hefty price, just like it all is on everybody else that is uh, associated with the type of uh, business that they were doing right before uh, getting killed in the same profession as uh, Young Dolph. Now, this is all coming to an end soon. We have been solving this case. We have basically got further than anybody else. Um, and so we want to thank you for always supporting. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, we couldn't have done it without you. But we are on the final quarter. It's the fourth quarter in this case. Um, and we just have a few questions for, for Raven and Maurice themselves on why they lied. Um, and so if we can get some type of conclusion to that, that would be key into figuring out um, exactly why they were there and lied to say that they weren't. That is critical because then it puts some sort of, you know, um, scenario motive to where they're lying to, to keep out information <laughs> as far as the, the P's and elbows that were found there. Maurice doesn't want to be tied to the P's and elbows being there. And that's why when they found them 70 elbows in that manager's office, Maurice didn't want to say that he was there because that's going to be put on him as the business owner. So he just said he wasn't there. So that way they can say that that just randomly popped up during all of that situ situation and that nobody should be responsible for the 70 elbows, um, which might have something to do with the reason why Dolph goes to that cookie shop, which ultimately gives them the chance to set him up at a potential alleged stash house. That's what this is all about. So Black Youngster has already said that he was trying to get their, their stash houses. And here is the evidence and receipts that Makita's could have been a stash house. So let me know what y'all think in the comments. Um, if you know if you know any other things that you can help out with, hit up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think. Like this video, share it, subscribe to the channel. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel and have a good day.